Good morning, Calvary. So glad to have you guys here today. My name is Robert. I got a question for you as we get started. Have you ever been around someone who took credit for something that wasn't really theirs to take credit for? <laughs> have you ever been that person? See, for Christmas, my oldest received this really cool Lego kit. It's this yellow Jeep with opening doors and hood, working steering and suspension. It even came with this lighting kit, so it has working headlights and taillights. This thing is really cool, especially since he is a six-year-old, thinks that Legos are the coolest things ever. Now, he's really good at building Lego kits and generally builds them uh, by himself, but this wasn't an ordinary Lego kit. It was what's called the Lego Technic series, which means it doesn't use normal Lego style pieces of bricks, but has these round connectors and a more mechanical and structural type system than a normal Lego. This kit also had almost 700 pieces to it. So day after Christmas rolls around, my son says, hey dad, let's put this together. So we lay it all out on the table and we get two pages in and I can tell that this isn't going to go well for him. So I come in and say, say let me take over and he starts helping. But by page three or four of the 70 plus pages of instructions, he's nowhere to be found and I'm left alone at the kitchen table in a sea of Legos. Fast forward to the following day and he's showing his friends and some of our extended family the Lego Jeep that he quote, built. Now to his credit, whenever someone questioned him and said, well, did you build this by yourself? He was pretty quick and honest to say, no, dad did most of it. But it was a reminder that we as people love to take credit for things that we have very little influence over. And today as we look at the next in our series of plagues in the book of Exodus, that's our connecting point to this. And, and along the way, it seems that plagues have escalated a little bit. The first plague is that the Nile turns into blood. The second is that, that frogs from the Nile go everywhere. And then the third and fourth are gnats and flies. And the fifth is the death of livestock. Things seem to be progressing in severity. So let's take a look. Exodus chapter 9, starting in verse 8, says this. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Take handfuls of soot from the kiln, and let Moses throw them in the air in the sight of Pharaoh. It shall become fine dust over all the land of Egypt and become boils, breaking out in sores on man and beast and throughout all the land in Egypt. So they took soot from the kiln and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses threw it in the air and it became boils, breaking out in sores on man and on beast. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boils came upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. But the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he did not listen to them as the Lord had spoken to Moses. See, here we have the sixth plague out of 10 that we'll eventually see throughout the book of Exodus. And it's actually very tangibly affecting people now. And, and, and all along, there was some inconvenience. And the fifth was pretty severe because it was the death of something, you know, uh, of the, the livestock, but it was still removed from people. It wasn't physically suffering to them. But now people are in pain and suffering with skin boils all over. And this is bringing things home personally. And we see that the magicians who were on Pharaoh's side and were using tricks and tactics and their ma magic arts to mimic the plagues of God all along were now finally unable to come and replicate this one because they weren't even there. They were in so much pain from these boils. But what's underlying all this? What's the point of this plague for the Egyptians here? Well, each plague wasn't just a random selection of punishment, but an attack on a different pagan Egyptian deity that the people had placed their hope and trust in. And this time, the attack was towards the deities of health and disease. See, the people had wrongly given credit to where their health came from. They were worshiping a series of deities instead of worshiping God who provided their health. So today, let me encourage you to not take credit for the things that God is really doing in your life. If you're healthy, it's easy to think that it's only because you're eating well and exercising and you've got a good rhythm. If your business is going well, it's easy to think it's only because you know how to run a business and how you're good at things. If you've experienced spiritual transformation and growth, it's easy to think that the reason for that is simply because you have figured out how to study the Bible and do prayer time and follow God's plan. When in reality, we need to give credit where credit is due. Us saying that all of those good things in our life are because of our efforts alone is, is kind of like saying that we've built the Lego kit while only making a couple of pages in. But let's be quick instead to say that God is the one who's taken us through the rest of the 70 pages of those steps in our, our life. Let's be quick to say that he's the reason we're healthy. 
the reason we have success in our efforts, the reason we have transformed our life. Because while we make an effort in all that we do, it's God that blesses our efforts and allows change and success to really happen in our life. So let's give God the credit for those things. Today, look around your life at the way you're blessed, the good things you have, and spend some time thanking and praising God for those things. Have a great and blessed day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.